Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Molly with Art of Lisa. I hope you're all well out there. And yes, it's my face. You finally get to see me. It's been a while. Um, if you're new to this channel, I am a channel that's dedicated to the wonderful Norwegian folk art called Rose Molly, a decorative art form that goes back to the late 1600s, early 1700s. I like to say that I don't go back that far. Um, anyway, it's an art form that I love to do and I love to share. Um, sometimes you get some family sampling, sometimes you hear some dog howling, sometimes whatever. I'm very bad at editing, so what you see is what you get. Uh, if you're new here, please take a moment to subscribe if you like what you see, and if you're back, welcome back. All right, so today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm actually, and I spoke about this in my last video, I'm actually going to demonstrate some, um, faux finishing type things. So, um, I hope you enjoy it. Hopefully my camera doesn't fall. So let's, let's see how this works. All right. So I'm going to bring you guys down here. Don't mind my hands. All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. All right. We got the table in here. All right. So I am working on plates right now. This is actually the plate that I really need to get to. And I'm going to do a faux finishing around the outer edge of this. Now, as you can see, I have a second plate here. So I did the second plate one, because I actually have um, shows coming up. I need extra stuff to do, so this is perfect. And I thought it would be great to demonstrate on both the green and the red. Um, the demonstration I'm going to do, I learned originally in oil. Uh, for those that are new, I paint primarily in acrylics now, though this is a, traditionally an oil art form. So I will um, also give the, the uh, it's the same thing for oils and acrylics, so it's really okay. All right, so I'm going to set it up. Um, first thing we're going to do, this just needs a little sanding beforehand, and I need to put some glaze on that. So as you can see, this is a nice bright red, brighter than I would normally use, and it's actually a color I haven't used before. So this is the Joe Sonia uh, background colors, and it is called Poppy. So it's nice and bright. And I'm going to do a burnt umber um, antiquing on top of this. So actually having this bright is not a bad thing. Most of the time I will use a um, uh, Norwegian orange or a red earth, uh, something bright with this. I'll talk about this guy in a few minutes. So let's just put him aside. All right, so before that I do anything on this guy, I'm going to give it one last little sanding and I'm going to put a coat of glaze on it and put it aside. So we want to make sure that you're sanding with the green. Now I'm using a, hold on, well you can't even tell what I'm using, hello, but uh, I believe this is a 600 uh, grit. Now if you don't want to deal with the, uh, the sand or the, you know, the residue, you can wet sand with this, which is quite lovely, and it will take it and hold on to any of the residue that are coming out. All right, so I am going to just take this very quickly. I don't want it too wet because I'm going, oh. Okay, make sure that you, if you're going to wet sand, do your lighter color first and not your darker color. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you have that issue. So we're just going to go ahead and take my gigantic scissors here and cut a new piece <laughs> and use it strictly on the red. I'm not too worried that I'm going to have too much uh, residue on this. I did give it a sanding beforehand, so just making sure it's nice and smooth. Now, I did put a coat on the beads of this plate already. I'm not worried when I work on this if I get anything on there because I will repaint it once it's all said and done. All right, so coming away around, we're pretty good here. This feels nice and smooth. Like I said, I have already, um, I've already sanded it, so it's ready. I usually have a dry brush. Use the dry brush to wipe things off. You can also use a hair dryer just to blow off the sand. You might not want to do it in your workspace, so do as I say, not as I do. All right, so we're going to do some glaze on that, just so there's a barrier on it. 
I'm using Joe Sonia's Clear Glaze Medium. Uh, many of you know I do like to use that pretty frequently. I'm just going to put a little in my little cup here. I don't need much. All right. I'm really giving you a, it's kind of a tutorial today more than anything else. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take my glaze medium and I'm going to give a coat and just come around. Just one and it acts as a barrier. Um, I may need to use my hair dryer a little later on to make sure this is dry in between. And I would suggest that um, you might want to put your glaze medium on the day before. I can't tell you how often I tell people that's what they should do. And again, do I follow what I say? No, because normally I'm in a rush. Okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. So I followed that around. We're going to let that sit. I can go ahead and I might as well, since I'm here, go ahead and put a coat on top of the center. Again, I am following my grain of the wood for the center here. Also, when I go to paint my plates, I try to make sure that I have that orientation there as well. All right, so we get this in here. All right. Okay, I'm going to put this aside. The brush I'm going to stick right now. I'm not going to need it for a while. I'm just putting it in my water bucket there. I will clean that out later. Okay, let's put this over here. All right, now we're going to do this antiquing on this. So this is a 14 inch um, flat rim plate with an inner bead. The outer color is a combination of two things. I was, um, I wanted a bright green. If you can see, that's kind of a bright green on there because again, I'm putting an antiquing on top of it. So I want the green to kind of hold up. Um, I was playing with bright pine green to start with as my base, but then I didn't feel it was quite bright enough. So I went to I have so many different tubes of paints and colors of paints and everything. So I went to Craft Smart Multi Surface Premium Satin Acrylic Paint Rainforest. Okay, if you can see that, it's probably backwards. Is it backwards? Yeah, it's backwards. Okay, I'll put it in the notes. Put that to the side. Make sure I put all these things in the notes. Now, the technique I'm going to share today, I actually learned. Hold on, let me look back in my notes. April 19th, 1997 with uh, Christina Cuny of Arlington, Virginia, who is a Westerheim gold medalist in this. And you can see my notes here. And this is from using it with oils. So first thing we're going to do is, believe it or not, this is the tool that I'm going to use to do my antiquing. Let's make the tool first. All right, put the plate aside. Anybody recognize this? Everybody has a cereal box at home. Most of you know, or, or many of you know who follow me. I like to use my cereal boxes or anything else as my um, boards. Let's see if I can find a good example here. Okay, old gratin potatoes. And then the other side is base coated blue. So this way I have sample boards. Well, here's another neat thing to use. So here we have your cereal bag. Of course, you want to make sure that you take the cereal out first. Um, I did make sure I had the crumbs out and tried to put it in a place so I don't get ants and mice because that sometimes is an issue where I live. Um, yeah, I live on an ant hill and I'm on two and a half acres surrounded by farms. So, yes. All right, I probably don't need it quite this big, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. Now, it's been a while since I've made one of these. Let me just take off that edge here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this and then accordion fold it. I'm probably making it a little bigger than I need. I might be able to get two out of this one. We'll see. Okay, so I'm accordion and folding it back and forth. Okay. Nice crinkle, crinkle sounds for anybody who finds little noises soothing. Well, this is a video for you. Eh, you know 
what? I am going to use this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, as you can see, I took the accordion fold and then I folded it in half. Okay, so then I have a rubber band ready. I'm going to take this rubber band and on the edge where you folded it, I'm going to wrap this rubber band around here. This is going to be your handle. Okay. All right. I actually need a new one, so I'm going to spread it around, kind of like a flower here. But what I'm going to do is take my gigantic scissors again. That's uh, my younger daughter loves to, <laughs> to threaten people with. Not really. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut in a rounded fashion here. So, so I don't want a straight cut across. I just want it rounded. Hopefully I didn't go too low. Take care of my garbage. Give it a little twist, twist it around a little bit. So I've made a cereal box, cereal, whatever container kind of flower here. Okay. And maybe I can take off some of my edges a little bit more around the outer so they're not so high. Okay, just kind of trim it around a little bit. Okay. Hopefully this will be a good one to use. This one's kind of gotten really dried out and it was, I made it very short. So I'm kind of excited to have another one here. Let's see, let's trim that a little bit more. I've got some folding. Okay, all right, let me take care of my garbage here. All right, so put that aside. And I am going to just set up, this is freezer paper. If you don't have palette paper, Freezer paper works great to use as a palette. Also, freezer paper is great to use if you um, want to have a practice board. You can put this over a piece of cardboard, um, whatever you need, and it just works great. Okay, you can use, you know, fruit roll-ups because that still exists in my house. Okay, got my painter's tape. I told you, this is a tutorial today. All right, put this across. Clean this up here. Put this down. All right, so we have a big week this week. My oldest daughter graduates college in two days. My younger daughter comes home from college. My son is soccer boy, soccer boy, soccer boy. Normal. So far, the dogs are quiet, so we're doing okay. And I'm in crazy land finishing up commissions and getting competition pieces done. But this is helps me with one of my commissions. So I thought, what a great teachable moment. I need this done. I need that green plate done to finish it, to put names on the outside. And I can teach something and do a video at the same time. All right, try to straighten up my area a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to use is burnt umber. This is the same if you're going to use oils. Okay, going over to my handy dandy paints over here. You can see I have quite a few of them. And there's my burnt umber. Um, I, so in oils, it's a luxuring technique you're going to do and you're going to take, and it's the same with your acrylics, you're going to take your burnt umber. Now I'm not using a tremendous amount. I can add more as I go. Here's a cap of a water bottle just to do as a comparison in size. And you're going to use your medium for this, but what I started doing is I'm going straight for the, um, my retarder. Let me go up here. So here's my retarder medium. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add to this. Get my palette knife. I don't want that palette knife. I want a bigger one. Okay. Let's mix this together. And just like in my other videos where I talk about my um, detail paint, I want to mix this so it's nice and loose. I want to be able to cover what I'm doing. And I want it to stay wet long enough that I can actually work with it. I'm going to add more to this simply because I have two plates I'm going to do. So I'll just add a little more. I can also come back and add more with that. Just taking a look at my red plate. It is 
drying quickly. Thank goodness. Okay. Because we'll use that as our second example. So this way you can see I'm both green and red. I'm going to add a little bit more retarder medium. Obviously, this is something you can experiment with if this is something any of my uh, painters out there would like to try. By all means, give this a try. Okay, go ahead, push that out. As always, I have my little pieces of paper towels ready. All right, a deep breath. Deep breath. Okay, hopefully you're ready for this. Here we go. All right, put this to the side. Woo! I almost sent you guys flying. Oh, well, that would have been exciting. All right. I have just my well-used one-inch uh, flat brush here. I'm going to go in. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the burnt umber on top of this, just working myself around in a circle. Um, you could put your, if you're working on a plate, you could put it on a ceramics wheel. To make the spinning easy, you do want to make sure you get your paint kind of close to your bead here. You will come back after it's dry and add any, if you missed any spots, you can come back with your burnt umber. Okay, all right. There we go. Pull that around. All right. I'm happy with this. All right, so here's where the magic comes in. Now, fortunately, this won't dry out on me right away. All right, I've got my handy-dandy little tool here, and I'm going to do a row on the outside, a row on the inside, and then a row down the middle. So you're ready for this? Here we go. I'm going to take it and just twist my way around. So if you can see, it's almost like making little rosebuds there. Let's see if I can hold this in such a way that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. One of these days, maybe I'll get high tech and I'll get a few different cameras and like I can zoom in and, you know, take out any bloopers and yeah, well, who am I kidding? <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I'm going to go all around the inside. Okay. Let me see if I can put you guys back down here again. Can I tilt you down a little bit? There we go. Whoa, don't fall. Ah! Okay, here we go. So now I'm working my way. And notice I'm just twisting my hand back and forth. Okay. Twist back and forth, twist, 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 twist. I'm not worried about getting stuff on the bead. I don't want to get stuff in here, obviously. Okay, so there's your second row. Let's see there and then down the middle okay down the middle we go it will show up probably a little better on the um, red as opposed to the green but kind of cool to see the effect I'm really happy with the, the green paint I used underneath and then you can just come around and give little twists just to kind of blend it in. It gives a burled wood effect. Oh, I'm really happy with this one. I'm glad I made a new one. Okay. Whoops. You check to make sure like I was missing a little bit on the top here. So, all right. So there's your first one. Now I've got a few little blobby spots on my bead. There, I'm going to take one of my small little pieces of paper towel fold it into a square very carefully do your finger and just come across the top of the bead you won't don't want to come towards the outer rim but I want to take out any extra that's really going to glob up the top because I don't want to have to go back and sand okay all right this guy is pretty much done a little unevenness here hold on let me just There. All right. All right. I'm pleased with this. Okay. So let's put this guy aside. So there's your green one. Okay. All antiqued, ready to go. I'll be able to finish that up with names. Um, probably 
Oh, I'll put it in. Um, I have a heater in one of my bathrooms. I'll probably put it in the heater with one of my and that room with the heater to let it dry, and then I'll probably be ready to go tomorrow. I will put a coat of um, glaze on top of it just to protect it. All right. So here's our red again. This is the poppy background, and I notice I'm getting a little too many edges on the side here. So I'm going to go ahead. Hold on. Move the plate out of the way first. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off, trim that off, trim that off. I don't want these little things breaking apart here on there. Okay. All right. Let's go back to this guy. And again, this is, remember, this is all wood that I'm using. You can see some of the color of the wood coming through here. All right. So same idea. Notice I don't, I really don't need to add any extra paint. I'm pretty good here. Okay, here we go. So this is a, it's a 14 inch, right? Yeah, this is a 14 inch Nordic double beaded plate. I had to think about that for a second. So it's a nice plate to use. So you've got the double beads that you're going to have to come back and paint again later, but at least it has one coat already on it. I'm going to try to make sure and get into, I want to get into that little lip in between the bead and the rim there. So we're going to come around. Okay. Um, I do have a video and I'm going to have to see if I can find it and uh, plug it here um, with base coating plates and different stuff. Remember Lisa, 20, 21st minute. Remember to put that in there. Okay. Let me come around. All right. Yeah, just taking my time, relatively. I am going to have a bit of a crazy day today, just trying to finish up commissions. I've got the competition pieces. I've got stuff, and yeah, oh, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. We all have stuff. It's part of life. It's all good. God is good, so we just go with each day. Try to keep it with a smile. You know, remember, don't stress yourself out over whether it's paint or whatever you do. I like to say it's just paint. It really is just paint. Whatever you do in life, it is just whatever it is. Enjoy it. Have fun. All right. So you can already see it's kind of changed change the tone of this. Okay. I did pretty good guesstimating on my paint. Put that to the side. All right. Here we go. I'm holding it down a little closer here because this is a smaller, a smaller rim here. And I'm just pushing it down and twisting back and forth. And by twisting back and forth, it, it keeps it uniform, but it also doesn't make it look exactly the same all the way through. Because when you look at a piece of wood, a burled wood or, you know, whatever, it doesn't have, it's not matchy matchy. All right, because, you know, it's not. It's close, but it's not matchy-matchy perfectly. All right. I'm going to give it a swish, 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 swish. Keep with. I like how the, um, the poppy, that, now I'm going to finish the outer. I'm going to go ahead and do the inner. I do like how this color is popping through. Again, it's poppy, so it's popping. I know. I'm not going to come up with a pun. I have a very good friend that's very good at making puns. He can figure that out for me. All right. Here we go. So at some point, my studio is going to be rearranged. And I'm going to have hopefully a little better work spot to do videos and teach my Zoom classes from. I am putting out a new listing of Zoom classes. Um, I'm going to put it on my mailing list first, and then it will go to rosemalling, www.rosemallingclasses.com. I will have it on my Instagram and on my Facebook, the information, and I'm hoping to get that out there um, this weekend. Uh, prob well, fingers crossed on Sunday. We'll see how this goes. All right.
keep swishing back and forth, keep swishing back and forth. Now I'm going down the middle, just giving a little, and I'm looking to see if I've got little spots that I, I missed, because I really don't want the brush stroke that I initially had coming through there. I'm trying to do it so you don't quite get the shine here. Okay. And of course there is some shine.